Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're gonna share with each other and with you our winter breaks. What the heck happened on our winter breaks? Cause we weren't together. And Something you, happened to you cause you sound different. You know, well yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off with that. I think that um, you know when we go on our breaks and we do stuff separate that Ear Biscuits is the place where we come back together. Yeah. And I, we share. In fact, we just give each other an update. I, I, just a second ago, I was telling you about something that I was going to tell you about, and I was like dropping my audio out as I was telling you, so that I couldn't, that I would wait to tell you now. It's like I didn't notice. What do you mean dropping your? I audio? was basically like saying you so so you know the equivalent of like, and then the so and so happened to the so and so, you know. Oh, you were you were yes, editing yourself right, so yes, that you could tell yes. me for reals now, right? Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. But I do wanna say, next week, uh, we're gonna start. Oh yeah, next week. We're gonna start something that, uh, how would you even describe I know, what, I don't, what we're gonna do? Well, yeah, we're going to, we're gonna, we're gonna devote a number of episodes to, to a topic uh, that we've been, it, just in the back of our minds, there's been something that's just been percolating for maybe for years. And and I mean, the th thing that we're gonna talk about for, you know, it's been, been a decades. A lifetime. A lifetime, decades. We're gonna share s about some stuff that we've never shared before. With, with ever. With any audience. Publicly. Uh, so we've decided that we want, we wanna talk about it here on Ear Biscuits next week. and. Uh, 2020, I know, man. I know Ooh, that's just boy. a big tease, but. Um, it is a big tease. That's what you gotta do in this business link. Man, I'm, I'm looking at my watch because I'm seeing if my heart rate's going up. And I kinda, this, hold on. You know, I'm, I'm kinda gathering my thoughts, but, but they're not fully gathered. your heart rate has gone up at weird times. I, we were doing something the other day, just like having a discussion amongst like four people, and yeah. all of a sudden you got your alarm, and I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't even say what it was, but you you knew that it was, an abnormal heart rate? Yeah, because I've you've just gone off before. Like. I think it has to do with what I'm dealing with. So just to just to put a closer on the teaser, and then yeah. I'll get back to the heart rate thing. Um, yeah. So starting next week for a few episodes, it's uh, TBD. It's something that we're gonna that we've we've made the decision we're gonna talk about. And if maybe even if I didn't, if we weren't saying it right now, we might even change our minds. I don't think so. No, no. But now we're definitely not. Well, we're, we are committed to this. Um, but first, let's catch up on our breaks. <coughs> I, I'm sick. My now, really. My my friggin' winter break has been bookended by sickness. Two distinct types of sickness. Now, the one that happened on the front side, I'm gonna wait to tell you about because it it was just it was. Strange, and I do know about that one. So it, strange, it was so strange you couldn't not tell me about that one. Right, it's and one I, of those things that like I. But you know what? When I listen to you tell it, I'm gonna seem like I've never heard it before. <laughs> you don't have to do that, but uh, it's yeah. It was just so strange. It's worth hearing twice, right? Sure. I mean, this version will be a little bit embellished because you've had time. And then on the if I can remember it, I mean, I I thought that it was putting my vacation in jeopardy, and it was. But then I was able to go on my vacation, which was, you know, enjoying the holidays here in Los Angeles with my immediate family. And then we went uh, to Mammoth Lakes. Mammoth Mountain is at Mammoth Lakes, right? It's where you went last year to go skiing. Usually, I followed in your footsteps usually to Mammoth. We Californians just say Mammoth. Well, I went Amateurs to Mammoth. who have been there one time say Mammoth Lakes. And um, let's see, we came back on a Sunday and then the the previous Saturday, my last day of skiing, I came down with the sickness that now, man, I hope I'm getting over it. I hope I'm not getting it but at all. Having come back to the office, I've heard that a lot of people have had this, I mean, it's just a head cold. Some people have had like bronchitis, some people have had other things. Christy had it before vacation. I did, and then Lando had it. And then I got, when Lando was just getting over it, dead gum it, he gave it to me. Yeah, it makes you hate him, doesn't it? And so now, and I will say, it's like the worst head cold I have ever had. The worst sore throat I have ever had in my I life. Like I need to wear like a mask. And I, I, I didn't have a fever, and I'm, I'm almost positive it, it, it wasn't strep throat. 
Uh, I didn't go to see anybody because I'm stubborn. But um, And I did see gradual improvement, but my throat was hurting so bad. I mean, it was like almost in tears, kind of like pain. Like That was probably strep throat. And then I was like, you know what? Like a sore throat there. Is Let's go get ramen. That, that painful? I it's better usually to, strep throat. Better it, to make it, me feel better to get ramen. It does usually resolve itself. Well, there was no fever. And it, sometimes it turns into a deadly disease. Well. That's what happens with strep. I went and got ramen, and I said, you know what? Last time I got ramen here, it, it, they called it spicy, but it wasn't, so make it a little more spicy. No, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Like, and I ate the whole bowl, but the first two, 15 minutes of eating, like I was, it was like I was just, I was in torture. It was, it was come to find out when you have like a, a raw sore throat, you don't wanna eat spicy foods, y'all. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. You wanna eat ramen, ramen would've been ramen, perfect. Ramen, but non-spicy. Why right. did I ask for it more spicy? It was so stupid. Yeah. And like. You know what, ramen is backwards. Uh, Moron, <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> it's close But though. it seems like it's, it would be. If you would've just said it was, right. I would've believed it's you. It's almost. My brain, is, my head is floating above my neck because of yeah. this decongestion I'm on. Yeah. I, I can't, take advantage of me, man. I can't it's think It's actually namar is what it is backwards. But. Um, before we went Close to get tomorrow. ramen, I had like a kombucha in the car because you know you've been talking about all this kombucha you've been drinking. I've been drinking so much kombucha. I'm like I'm drinking a kombucha and it made I me have feel a mother, better. I have a mother in my stomach, and I that that can happen. That can happen. I know. I want it. You don't want that. It's the only way I can give birth. It's like <laughs> a yeast ball. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna crap out a yeast ball. What a you think that's gross? What I'm about to tell you is really gross. <laughs> oh gosh. Great. Well, I'm drinking a kombucha and I'm like I think I should gargle with this. And that was horrible too. Like every, I think all of my instincts of did bad nothing ideas. but made it worse. You're starting 2020 off on the wrong foot, man. With a lot uh, of bad ideas. Yeah, and I think I'm getting over it, but this morning I got up and you know, you're up for a few minutes and things start to drain and start to start to settle and you, like you can start to breathe through your nose a little bit. You've been net, a, you hadn't been nettying any? I did some netty pottying. <laughs> <laughs> I took Jade outside and when I'm out there with her, like I had walked down the stairs out the front. I got enough body movement that like there was some drainage and I like, I hocked up a loogie, oh, okay? Gosh. And I'm outside waiting for her to pee and I, so I spit it out. I'm sorry this is gross, but it's just, it's what happens. And I looked down and it well, was- Well, it's what happens. You don't have to tell, listen, it was a bloody. lot of things happened to me today that I'm, I'm not gonna tell you about. Well, I'm telling you, it was bloody. But I could tell by the way that it came up that it was like, it was a, it was a weird consistency, so I, I bent down, and I picked it up, and it was. What is wrong with you? You know, if you've like, if you like, have a grape, and you like squeeze the innards out of a grape, and all you're left with is the skin of the grape. That's what I spit up, but it was blood colored. I freaking spit up a scab the size of a grape you that came out of my nose. You had, like somewhere in between, like the back of my nose at the top of my throat where it was hurting the worst. Apparently I have a wound. Yeah, you had strep throat, man. Or something worse. You wanna see it? I have it right no. here. It makes me think of the, that Hold scene. On, you in, took a picture of it? I didn't, no, I was gonna pull it out of my pocket. The actual grape. I'm sorry for grossing y'all out, but uh, I actually feel a little better now that I've told you about it. <laughs> It made me think of that scene in Buddy System season two where uh, I burn your tongue with coffee and then you can no longer be a professional food taster. And But then at the end, whenever I fail you in the tournament, you start talking funny and you realize that your tongue scab is coming off and you pull like a big scab off of yeah, your tongue. so gross. And we originally scripted it so that when you pulled the scab off of your tongue, you were then gonna stretch it out and tie it around your head like a headband. Yeah, yeah. That was our. That's what we scripted. It was a little too gross. And then we got we got notes that it was a little too much. Yeah. Kind of like my story. The tongue scab and it was a, a, alone was enough. So I think I think I'm I think I'm well on my way to recovery now that I spit out that scab. Golly, man. You've been hanging out with me all morning. Yeah, I wish you hadn't told me that. I, I, I so, still feel like shit, so, and I'm just you know I just no okay. bones about it. All right. But I'm here, I'm here for y'all. Somehow I've avoided this and it just, I just have this impending sense of doom because some, everybody's gotten sick and I just haven't gotten sick and I just. Yeah, you'll get it <sighs> and you'll hate it because it doesn't go away quickly. It's miserable, man. It's miserable. 
Um, okay, well thanks for that, Link. I feel like we can go home now. I'm sorry. It's, and you know, I can't not be me. Um, and I, I think there's something to learn from that. Well, I, but I, I'm gonna go back to what I said again. I mean, I could describe some like bodily things that happened to me today, this week, that I just kinda, I keep to myself, you know? I mean, there's, I appreciate you being vulnerable and I uh, appreciate you being open about your experiences, but I mean, things have come out of me as well. I, I, it's one of those sicknesses where. But it's where, kinda just between me and myself, you know what I mean? You know when you're in the worst of it, you're like, if I ever get better, when I get better, because I believe I'm gonna get better, I'm, I'm gonna be so grateful for feeling well. You don't follow, I'm never gonna, you don't follow my Twitter apparently. That's what that's what this just represents. Really, yeah. you tweeted about this. I tweeted this very. It doesn't concept. work, right? Then you get well, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm just normal." There is no gratefulness. Yeah, you think about how grateful you're going to be when you're not sick. That's when, why when, when I sick. get home, I'm gonna go find that scab and I'm gonna take it inside. And it's gonna be a memento. You're gonna take it for granted. You're gonna take it for granted just like everybody does. I carry it around in my pocket. And then you I'm get never sick gonna again. Forget. I'm never gonna forget. Um, how was your vacation? Uh, well, let me see how many loogies I hocked up. Um, it was great. You know what? You Actually, it was just kind of it was it was okay. Yeah, I know, man. That's how I, I feel. I, I, I'm going to tell you all about my okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about my okay break. Uh, but first, we're going to let you know that you. Oh, can that's get a great this, teaser. Um, good mythical morning sweatshirt. It's very. It's kind of cold in this building right now. It's 68 degrees outside. But our our office, they've tried to get the the heater working. And I know you're like, 68, why is the heat on? Well, because it's like 40 in the morning <laughs> and I want a little heat. Well, we can't get any heat in our office. No matter, you know. If it, you want heat, go to mythical.com and get yourself and so a, I just, I wear a flame a on a shirt. I don't need heat. There's a flame on the shirt. And if you rub it, it gets hotter. And that's the case with all shirts, by the way. That's not a special feature of this one, but I made I, it seem like it was. I'd say it's the case with everything. It's that just you the can case buy. with friction. You can buy all types of stuff at mythical.com. If you rub any of it, it's gonna get hotter. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna put that on the banner. Rub it and it'll get hotter. Our clothes, now with friction. I mean, we got all type. we got necklaces, lip balm. Rub any of it, it's gonna get hotter. That's true. Rep your boys, um, mythical.com. My, you, it's not, you it, do? It, 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 it wasn't a vacation. Can I just say that? Because people, people, say people say, how was your Christmas vacation? Let's call it a winter break for you. I'm like, I, I, and it wasn't even much of a break. Oh. I, I don't know how to. It, it was a break from work. It was, but I'm a workaholic, Link, mm. which is something that I, which is something that I already knew, but I typically have, December rolls around. Yeah. And there's like a bunch of things that sort of build up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that over break. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that over break. I'll, I'll, I'll do that over break. And I had a list of things. I didn't get to any of them. I mean, maybe like one thing. And so I and actually. Now, and now you feel bad about it, and that's not right. Well, no, I I, I had this, uh, uh, I discussed this with my therapist last night, actually. Uh, I'll discuss it with you now. Uh, but this sense of anxiety that was building because yeah. I wasn't getting to the things and I was like, oh, what's gonna happen is break's gonna get over, be over, and then I'm gonna have all this stuff that I gotta do right at the top of the year and I don't wanna do that and I'm anxious about it. That's, I mean, yeah, and that's what happened to me when I got back yesterday into the office. That's why my, my, my watch went off. My heart rate went through the roof for a second because we were just talking about something that I felt like that we were losing control of. Well, the thing that I, realized yesterday is when we had a conversation about it, that's when I started feeling better. Because it started feeling like, okay, now things are actually happening and like now people are saying, well I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and you're gonna do this and it's like yeah, what you clarity did was, you, came. Yeah, you and no, I'm, no I'm, work was done. I'm good. Let me, just, let me just be very clear, no work was actually done. It was just meetings. I'm good at just pretending that there's nothing to be done until you bring it up and gain clarity and start to feel better, what you're doing is you're transferring all the stress to me. That's what happened. But I also, I love my family. Let me be clear about this. Uh, but when you are the one in the family who has moved away and mm -hmm. you come back, 
you there you got to you got to see everybody and you and you and yeah. you got to see everybody kind of like and your time ends up kind of getting scheduled and it's not necess- there's nothing relaxing about it it's not like going on a vacation is what i'm getting at and so it doesn't have the same sort of emotional effect that vacation has you going somewhere i'm i just took my jacket off don't let me distract no, you no you dress like you're going somewhere oh you got an interview <laughs> Uh, I thought if I put on a button up, it would make me feel better and seem less sick. I'm freaking glassy eyed and and tail droopy. You know, I'm just trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to muster some sort of reason to go on. If you are going to an interview, I suggest a tie. Just don't do the. Don't do that. Um, but uh, Jesse and I did have a little bit of a break. So we, of course, we were in North Carolina for almost two weeks, seeing everybody. And the the good news is that everyone's close together. So and I stay in the same place. So it's like when you guys go back, you have to go to all these different places. So we don't have to do that. North Carolina. Um, but we were there, like I said, almost two weeks. And then right after Christmas, Jesse and I decided. Well, we had already decided this. We're gonna go get a little time away. We're gonna go to Asheville. Leave the is, kids with which the is like relatives? Nashville without an inn. And it's the place that if you live in Los Angeles and you say you're from North Carolina, they're like. Asheville, <laughs> like it's like the only thing that people know about North Carolina in LA yeah. is Asheville. Cool spot. It's because it's super cool, but no, Mountains. no, you don't know anybody who lives there. But uh, it's a cool place to go. When that 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 Grove Park Inn, that big old historic hotel with a giant spa, I got my, my massage on, etc. You stayed there. Yeah, and brilliant uh, plan. I you st- you left the kids with like. I don't even know. Listen, I lost cousins. I lost track. I'm not kidding. I lost track of my children. Both of them. But they were for in multiple ca- days. They were under care of relatives. I assume so. <laughs> okay, well how was Asheville? And I'm not joking about this, especially the 15 year old. Like at one point I saw him and then like six days later I saw him again. Okay. I was like, are you brushing your teeth? Like I, I just, are you taking care of yourself? <laughs> Who's feeding you? I can guarantee you he looks better than you do. I mean, you look like you rolled off a. <laughs> man, look at that, your hair, man. Is every when you went home? Did everybody have to say have to give an assessment? Interestingly, no. I think they just are a little worried. Everybody just kind of no longer made eye contact. Yeah, they're just a little worried and won't, like cave won't, won't mention it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've, even I've, when I've I saw lo- you yesterday, I was like, took my breath away. I've I've lost. Well, thanks, Link. Um, <laughs> I've lost a little control. It's it actually has become it was a burden. I will say I don't want to talk about my hair at all, really. But the only thing I'll say is that it has become a burden. You fit in in Asheville. We have we have gotten to men. burden stage. It doesn't seem like you're you're burdened at all. And I thought that was the point. It takes a lot of time to make it look like I don't care. Okay. So I uh, we went to Asheville, and you may remember from uh, we had a great time the two of us. You may remember. Last year, if you happen to be a uh, long time listener, a student of my Instagram, <laughs> I'm in 2020. I'm not going to use the term <clears throat> follower for any of my social media. I'm just going to use the term student. Um, and so I I, I got a, a belt with my name on it last year. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah okay. And uh, I remember that belt. Jesse and I. You've been wearing that belt all year, every single day. With few exceptions, I wore that belt with okay. my name on it. It hit me about November of last year. You know what? I should do a belt again this year. And then it was just like, I should do a belt every year. A belt every year should be my new thing. <laughs> do you know anybody else who does that? Uh, I saw some. If I probably do, but they don't think it's worth sharing. I saw what they call some white space in the belt every year, you know, area. So. Uh, Okay. So uh, I thought I was gonna go down to Olvera Street where they, the, that's where the guy made my belt last year. Here in LA, not Asheville. But I, you know, I failed to do that because of all the stuff we had to do and whatnot that I was anxious about that Don't I didn't Don't blame it on do. me. And, uh, but there was a very fine leather shop. I would give him a shout out, but I already forgot the name. Oh. It's, it's next to the Early Girl Eatery in Asheville, which is also a really good place to eat. Good spot. Yeah. yeah, Jenna knows about that. We ate there when we did the biscuits. pilot for uh, Commercial Kings. Commercial Kings. Well, a couple doors down from that is this leather place, and uh, the dude has a large assortment of antique belt buckles, 
along with all the leathery that he will do. I don't know if that's a word. I didn't read many of the signs. Um, but I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna get a belt buckle this time. Not just a belt, I'm gonna get a belt with my name on it and a belt buckle. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, <laughs> you'll have to wait if you're listening. But this is my new belt. That's my new belt buckle. Oh. Look at that. That look at that is a. Should wooden I put the microphone up to it? <laughs> See if you want to hear what it sounds like. That's a wooden belt buckle with a desert scene on. Try it. Try not to show any skin. Tuck in your sweatshirt. No, no, no. Tuck in the sweatshirt. No, no, that's good. That okay. Happy trail. Um, I'm gonna take it off and show it. I'm gonna let you examine it. Hold on. This is trying to different kind of. This shit. is bringing back flashbacks of my babysitter's husband when he'd come home from work. So this is a little bit. He would just come home from work and take off his belt. This is a little bit different. Paul now, Taylor, custom, Paul Taylor, custom sandals and belts. Paul's Taylor, custom <laughs> sa sandals and belts sounds about right. Custom sandals? And belts. So, now, so you may remember. This, this is, let me, can, can I describe uh, what I've seen because they're yeah, frustrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what Rhett has taken off from his waist. And, is a belt. And it, it's, is a warm belt. Matter of fact, it's hot to the touch on the back of the buckle. Yeah, yeah. It's a metal buckle. I've been thinking real hard. And it's it's got wood it's got wood in there, mm. I think. Or that could be Jasper. I think it's wood. It's wood, man. There's a saguaro I, I, I cactus. I went to the wood section. There is a freaking setting sun over the um Monument Valley esque desert formation. It's a it's a desert scene mm. on an oval belt buckle. Uh, on a on a leather belt, and let me tell you about the design on the belt. Uh, I can't remember the name of this. What this is, but um, I think it's called sagebrush. It's called tooling. Now, last year it was really haphazard and he did it really quick. This guy had to mail me this belt because he was like, "It's going to take me, you know, I can't finish this today." Because this is like this thing they like roll it through this thing, and it's got this. It's sort of this cactus theme. But then when you get to the middle, let's check out what I did there. It seems that Rhett has commissioned the writing of something. It's hard to see because it's an old, it's an old English. But what does it say, Link? Z Zorizo, <laughs> Zorizo, Zori. Oh no no no, Z O Rhett Zo twenty. Oh <laughs> yeah, twenty Rhett twenty. That's right. I got a. I got a belt with the year and my name on it. Uh, and that is what I'm doing from here on out, ladies and gentlemen, and then my kids can fight over daddy's belt collection when I die. So it says 20 Rhett 20. I'm not gonna give it to both of them. What year is it, 20 I, Rhett 20? In my will, it's going to say, a fight to the death between my sons is how you determine who gets the belt collection. So when you die, you want one of your sons, sons to then to die. also die. And the and the trying son, to get your belt collected. The son that loses the fight is buried with me. With no belt. <laughs> There's so many belts, man. Just divide up the belts. This is this let me tell you right now. I didn't this belt got pricey real quick. The one in Alvera Street went forty bucks. I want to know for a custom belt. I don't even care. I want to know how much you pay for it. Well, you got the thing that gets it up there is the belt buckle. This did, belt buckle. Did he buckle, make that? Seventy nine dollars for the belt buckle. It's it's. But it's a custom. It's an it's antique. He he just he he has these. He I mean, found that from somewhere. Some man that, wore this. That's you know? been on some other man's pubic area for a long time. Well, uh, just above it, a man who wore this has like driven cattle across expanses with Billy Crystal. You know what I'm saying? This is this is a real deal, man. You don't know. Well, I like to believe it. What was that guy's name in City Slickers? Pappy, not pa uh, no, uh Curly. Curly. <laughs> uh, Jack Palance, right? I think he won an Oscar for that. What a great movie. Doesn't really hold up, watched maybe it recently just, with the kids. Maybe he just came out during Kinda the Oscars. Holds up. Anyway. I'm not saying he was gay, I'm saying he just appeared. <laughs> he could also be gay. Um, I don't know or care. But uh, anyway, that was the highlight for uh, me honestly was getting a new belt. I mean, I gotta say, just to it kind of put things was. in perspective, the best part of my Christmas break was getting a new belt. <laughs> and I feel a little naked without it, but I'm gonna see how I can, see if I can sit Yeah, don't stand it. up, because your pants will stay where they are. Um, when we got back, I felt like I needed a little bit of, a, of an actual break, and so uh, I went skiing 
and you, Big Bear with Shepard. I was going to take. You knew I was. I was. I had been skiing, and you felt like you couldn't get left behind. Well, if you, that's how you want to see it, the way I saw it was, we're going skiing as a family, in a uh, in we're going to Mammoth in the near future, and it's like you kind of want to get you get your ski legs yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, but Locke ended up going actually to Mammoth with friends and so, and got a concussion and had to not ski. Long story, he's fine. Um, but wow. so Shep and I just went, just the two of us, skied for a couple of days, had a great time. I did see that on your story because I was, I was back in the real world then being sick and doing nothing except bedridden, looking at you gallivanting down the mountain. Tr- really trying to see if you could ski better than me is what I was trying to assess having gone for uh, five days in Mammoth. I think I could probably ski better than you. Okay. I I've just, I've, I've got a lot more skiing experience. I was. That is true, but I don't My think whole spring break can. last year. Yeah. Was six days of skiing. Uh, you wanna have a ski off? Ski off, done. Well, that kind of brings name, me to my. Name a time and place. My thoughts about skiing, which are, it had been two years since I had been skiing, really for the first time in a long time, when I, I along with the kids, were trying to learn how to ski. You do the Black Diamonds? And giving up the snow boarding. Um, hell no, I don't do well, the Black Diamonds. Well, then I'm better than you, bro. Are you telling me you can ski a Black Diamond? If it's not moguls, hell yes. Well, then you're definitely better than me. I mean, because I mean, I, I, I went w- up to a blue. I don't look like I know what I'm doing, but I'm fine. I mean, I I went up to I, a blue. There's a lot of sliding going on, not and a lot of real skiing. Here's what I thought. Here's what struck me because I was like, Christy, do you want to come ski with us? Like we're learning. We we'll have an instructor. Um, and she was like, No. She basically said, You know, it's scary. And I was like, Okay, I respect that. And then that's what's fun about it. I got back. I got out there and um, with the kids, and we were all doing well, like being instructed and really getting back into it after a couple of years. But it, the thing that struck me, I was seeing like old people. I was seeing people who were like rotund, like not really people in shape. Okay. Yeah, because you're sliding. And the bigger, the better. I think. But but here's the thing, I skiing is an extreme sport. You're going down a mountain on oh. two sticks and for some reason, anybody thinks they can roll up, rent some crap and do it. And then there's, and I don't know how old people and out of shape people are doing it. I consider myself kind of in shape, in shape enough at my age to like get out there and look all right. But like, maybe I have a heightened sense of Mortality, or there, it's, I, I, I have an appreciation for there's a lot more riding on me now. You know, your entire career, buddy. Okay. For one, <laughs> so it is scary. I mean, you're freaking on the side of a mountain well, on sticks. I, it's a, I, I it's will, an extreme sport. Well, like, no, no, it's not. You, no, you, no, 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 no. It's not an extreme sport. You wouldn't just, certain ver- ski jumping is an extreme sport. Ski skiing is an extreme sport. No, it's not. It's you a would, winter sport. If you would go to the top of the mountain in the summertime with a mountain ice bike, skate, ice skating say, is not an extreme sport. Mountain bike down this. There's no way anybody could just. It's like, well, I've ridden a bike before. Okay, zoop, 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 I'm going down a mountain. No. You, well, uh, hold on, but see, no, you can. It's it's all it's on a spectrum. I could go down a mountain bike course at a very slow speed. I couldn't do it in a way that is respectable or actually sporty, Once but you, I could break my way down it. Well, this is, and speaking from experience, and I think I talked about this years ago when I had my accident on like a downhill mountain bike course, is that that's not actually true. If you, if you get to a certain steepness, like the a double black diamond or a black diamond of mountain biking, you act, the slower you go, you're screwed. Well. But you see, gotta bank the but curves. But with skiing, listen, if you get to a place, I, I don't do the, I do the black diamonds occasionally when it's like, oh, well you kinda need to go down this really quick black diamond to get to this other blue and it's not moguls. Moguls is bad news for me. I got, I'm big, I got big skis. I I don't like to turn really fast. But even really the fast. turns, the thing about a turn is that in order to, to ski properly, you have to commit and shift your weight forward down the hill and all instinct tells you to do is the steeper it gets, lean back more, which immediately causes trouble, and you're you're zooming down the mountain, and you you could you could die. You have to trust the technique, at least in my understanding, to shift your weight forward over the the leading ski or the the outer ski, and then make a turn, and that 
is a scary moment. Like when I was on a blue. Well, it's very I, scary. I, I until did it, it's, but I was. Uh, it's very scary. Wigging out. Until you develop the feel to be like, oh, I can turn both ways reliably. And once you can turn and stop yourself, then you can pretty much do anything. Again, I'm not saying I look like I know what I'm doing. It's not like I, yeah. I've got good form and I'm not carving. I'm definitely kind of sliding and let it be known. I'm thinking about not getting hurt the entire time. It's not like when I was a young man and I was just thinking about what's the most fun thing that I could do right now? And yeah, yeah. what's the most fun line that I could take down this mountain? It's very much like, how can I not get hurt? Is that way less hurt? Is this way less hurt? Like, well, to me, that's not going above a blue. Well, but you gotta, but you still gotta have a little fun. And once you get, there doesn't seem to be any difference. Steepness is no longer becomes an issue when you can turn without any trouble. And that is sort I don't of, get that yet. That you, 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 you'll get there in like two more days of skiing. You know what, you come out with me, I'll show you. <laughs> I mean, who has has anyone taught you how to do like the plant the pole and turn thing? Like the proper technique for I've been I watch you know the people with the full ski suits? Oh, like yeah. one piece like that dude knows what he's doing. Even though you can like get one that says US ski team on Amazon. I just assume if you've got one of those, you know what you're doing. <laughs> uh and I'm I gonna get one of those just so people can say, You'll never believe what happened. I got Run over by a guy from the U.S. ski yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. He was totally out of control. Yeah, he must have been. He the, was amazing. The equipment manager. <laughs> uh, no, I yeah, I can do it, but it's not. But it's yeah, it doesn't look smooth and cool and like pop. Like I want to get there because I think there's a zen associated with like going up high. I mean, I was at Mammoth the whole time with my kids, and like we didn't. We only went on a blue once. You miss so much of the mountain. I know, but I just I didn't have the technique. Green, and I didn't want to ditch my kids. Here's the problem. Here's just the problem with the greens. Too, Too many, many people. people. In fact, when you go to at, uh, Big Bear, there's there's it, it's Summit Snow Summit, which is the yeah. it's sort of the bigger mountain between the two. You can do there. There's this really long run called Summit Run, and it's green the whole way, and it gets carved up by all these people, and there's just kids, and it, it's like. Old people? Yeah, but what we found is if there's a certain part of the mountain, if you go off sort of as far to the left as you can get, you come down these long blue runs and then you get back on the lift and you literally just no line. Yeah. And, and you, like the, you, the people are an obstacle. Uh, we should go, man. My boys my boys are getting Ski there. Off. Lily, Lily's done great, but she doesn't really, she doesn't, she's not motivated to get up the mountain. But the three of us are. Uh, one of the things that I'll go with you. Uh, when is that? In a couple of weeks? Am yeah. I now invited? Well, no, we've already kind of got things worked out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going with a different family. <laughs> I thought he invited me, guys. Yeah, Did you yeah, hear that? Uh, he was like, "Come with me." You know, and then ski I ski off any time, any place, except the predetermined time that I'm going skiing with another family. <laughs> okay, you you don't want me to embarrass you. I get um, it. Jesse, when we were in Asheville, when we travel together, Jesse watches trashy reality TV. It's just what she does. We don't really watch it any other time. Okay. It's it, we, we have like TLC and Bravo, like you know, at home. But I don't know if she knows that. <laughs> and I would like to keep it that way. I think she thinks that TLC and Bravo only get broadcast in hotels. Okay. Hope she. I, does. I I'm good thing she doesn't listen to this podcast. I can't tell you what's on that. What did you watch? Well, on t TLC. Um, isn't that the, the learning, learning channel? channel? Yeah, Link. No one's learned anything on TLC for many years. Okay, um, except how to not behave. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to not be like the people in all the shows that they have. Okay, but um, like the house. The one shows? in particular that we watched is Ninety Day Fiance. You guys know about this? Mm -mm. There's a show where, well, Jesse made fun of me and tweeted this out because. I was watching it kind of over her shoulder. I get sucked in, I'll admit, I get sucked into these things. And they go through a number of different couples. And I was like, is it always, is, is one of them always international? And she like she thought that was so funny she had to tweet it. Because the whole point of the show is, yes, it's someone who's getting married essentially to get a, to get a green card. Oh. Um, it's not that the love isn't real, but the And then they only the have to be married is, for three months? Well, I don't know. How, What's the three months? Because I think you have to be, I think you have to be, 
Is it married for, I don't know where the 90 days comes in. You have to be engaged for at least 90 days. Like Apparently, you have to be in a relationship for 90 days. to enjoy it. What, no. did, what, did you, what was your takeaway if it wasn't that? My takeaway was I learned a lot about myself. Cause I ended up tweeting something like, um, sometimes I start to think that I'm a good person and then I realize that I'm ruthlessly, ruthlessly judging a woman I don't know for serving pizza rolls at her wedding. <laughs> now the tweet that I wanted to tweet, that Jesse said, no you can't tweet that, was sometimes I start to think that I might be a good person and then I start having murderous impulses towards a woman that I don't know for serving pizza rolls at her wedding. So you wanted to kill somebody. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about, is that when I watch these people. But you like pizza rolls. What a hypocrite. No one even served pizza rolls at their wedding. It was the kind of thing that would have happened on the show. It was a joke. Okay, okay. I found myself wanting to hurt the people on the show. <laughs> and, and, and just like, I was like, that where is this coming like from? That doesn't sound like entertainment to me. Do, man, somebody who's got so many opinions about the way people behave, you watch one of these freaking episodes and you tell me you don't wanna kill these people. I'm not, I'm saying I probably would, but I wouldn't spend my time trying to be entertained in that you manner. Just, you're just, you just watch it and you're like, I, you, you can't, it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. You, you just can't, but I can't believe some of the decisions that people make. Oh, but you know what? That tweet that I actually made, that that was different. I, I, I've got my, I've got my uh This show is not holes. about you rehashing all your tweets. No, man. no, no, no. The thing that I was actually tweeting about was Four Weddings, which is a different show. I wanted to kill those people too, just to be clear. Four Weddings? This is when four women have a wedding. They each have a wedding. Uh, they're all, all getting married, but they attend each other's weddings. As, as the show and then they rate each other's weddings and then the winner, the best wedding from the other three women deciding who has the best wedding gets a, like a trip, honeymoon or something. So the women are, are horrible to each and other. And I wanted to kill three out of four of those women. Okay. Not, there's one that was like, okay, I, I, she, she, she can go. But you, 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 you wanted to keep watching. I, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Sounds unhealthy. But I couldn't stop hating them. I, I, I was just like, I can't do this. I can't watch this. These people make me so mad for the dumb things that, the decisions that they're making. Is that, I mean, is Jesse feeling that way? Why does she watch it? The same reason anyone watches any reality television. Yeah, but I mean, of course. Watch. She doesn't get angry. It's just like, we. I watch The Bachelor too, you know? But she gets a kick out of it. She's not getting angry. I don't know, maybe she's more, maybe she's got, she's better than me. Well, we know that she's no. She's getting a kick out of it, but you you, know, you just get so frustrated with with people sometimes. And you're just like, I just, I just don't understand how this person got to be this person. So it, I think I thought that they were supposed to make you these shows feel better about yourself, but it's interesting that it's making you come to grips with the fact that you are a bad person. Yeah, because I think you could just watch them and just be like, well, I'm better than that person. Oh, I'm better than that person. Mm. I'm better than that person. I'm glad I'm not that person. I'm better than that person. Which would be a pretty easy thing to do. But instead, it turned into murderous impulses. I wouldn't actually do it, but I just found it. I, I, I felt it in my heart. And wanted to tweet it, but then my wife said I couldn't, but now I have. And then I, I told her. I don't tweet on vacation, because I'm on vacation. Tweets work for me. I, uh, but I did, in my draft, in my drafts. Yeah, on my it was a murderous draft. It just says murderous impulses in a draft. Okay, On okay. Twitter. Okay. Because I was like, I gotta go back to that. That's get, a good one. People, that. people will like get that. Get rid of that. It did remind me that um, last year when we went to Sedona, at night, you may recall, we would watch Survivor. Having never watched it, we as a family got into watching Survivor. So my plan, and everybody was on board, was that we were gonna do that again this year. Oh, good. There's an interesting dynamic though that like, Lily's 16 years old. She had a friend who was all, also in Mammoth. So like the first night, she was like, can I spend the night with my friend? And like, no, they, you have to stay here and watch Survivor with your family. Yeah, so I was like, yes, tonight you can be away. You know, so it's like, we're in this weird flux as a family where it's like. You can't, you can't hold it together. You, you gotta, can't hold it together all the time. I, you, so you yeah. choose your battles. Yeah. That went out the door, but what we did do, um, in the wake of the rise of Skywalker and something about Harrison Ford made a connection to Indiana Jones and I think Christy was like, we should watch Indiana Jones because the kids hadn't seen it. And so, what? 
they hadn't seen Indiana Jones, any of them. I have, okay? Wow. Of all the things I haven't seen, I have, and I got a special place in my heart for the second one, Temple of Doom, because it is the first movie I re ever remember watching in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd visit my dad, I had visitation with my dad or whatever you call it. He was not in prison, no. <laughs> uh, what's it called when you you don't live with your dad and then you have to go stay with him? Hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I was hanging out with my dad. Um, there, is a, there is a name, it's I don't know. not custody, what's that name, I don't know. Anyway. It might be visitation, you might be right, but it just sounds um, like you're visiting a prison, a person in prison. I mean, this was, I think it was 1983 when this movie came out. Can you check that? I guess, I mean, maybe it was Temple four. of Doom? Yeah. It, I mean, it could have been, even if it was 86, I'd, I would have been eight years old. It was the first movie I saw in the theater and I was, he wanted to see it. And I guess he thought I would like it, but I was terrified. 84. 84. So, yeah, I was six years old. Because of the heart scene? Yeah, and a dude reaches in there and pulls out a beaten heart. It scared the crap out of me, but it was special. And I wanted to share that with my kids, especially Lando, who I, I told him to close his eyes. So we watched all four of them, and uh, let me tell you, the first three are freaking magical. The fourth one, it has Shia LaBeouf, and you know I'm really into him now. Right. Big that, fan of his. But you're, you're into Shia LaBeouf. Big you're fan of Shia, now. Shia LaBeouf. Right now. Ma fully matured, <sighs> not like, you know. Too much CGI. Teen I, Shia LaBeouf. The first three are all, I think Temple of Doom's my favorite, but we had a blast watching these, and it's, the first two are just, they're all amazing. I mean, I, I think they're my, you know, my favorite movies, and I was just reminded of that. You're your favorite movies, and you, your kids hadn't seen them until now? Yeah. Um, what have you been doing? It was fun, man. It's fun watching that, but um, yeah. So that 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 was the big thing for me, and I think you know coming back, I'll tell you the story that I got to tell you the medical story before I went, but just concluding because I, I kind of feel the same way you do in terms of like given. I, last night I told Christy I was like you know now that we're back from our vacation, what do we what do we think about it? What do we learn? What do we want to do differently next year? Because this is our second year of being in in L.A. for for Christmas. And the thesis is we're building our own traditions. And yeah, and I had this feeling of like, like you said at the top, you're like, ah, oh, it was, you know, it was, I always wanted it to be great and be like the best Christmas ever, but it was, it was okay. But then the more we thought about it, I realized we actually started to talk about, and I wonder if you and Jesse ever talk about this. It's like, as the kids get older, we want to start building expectations and traditions, things that we are gonna keep doing, there's an expectation, so that when they go off to school or go off to their own lives and they're starting to date people and get engaged and whatever they're gonna do, that they're gonna wanna come back and do these things with us every year. So it's like, okay, this is what we do for the holidays. And after the holidays, we would always take a trip. You know, We've done it two years in a row it doesn't really matter how great the trip is, as long as there's an expectation that like, especially when kids start leaving, I was like, man, I'm, I'm sure it will be special when Lily's been off at college, and then she comes back and like, the boys haven't seen her since she went to college. Like she didn't come home for Thanksgiving, say. You know, we got- Where is she going? She's like further away at college, kind of like, you know, our friend's daughter, who like, uh, went up to Oregon and right. like they didn't see her until her sibling didn't see her until she came back for Christmas and I'm like Yeah, and if we're if we're just at home, you know, what's gonna happen? Oh, I got these plans here I got these plans here, but like if we have this expectation that we're doing some sort of family trip I'm like I think this can become really special in that way So I started to feel better about it then like Lily and Lincoln have left the house and like it's just Lando waiting around It's like hey, I haven't seen my siblings in months and then they're coming back and we're doing something and I started to feel like, you know what? As I, as I often conclude about myself, I put so much pressure on the specifics and on achieving some sort of perfection that it actually made me feel better to say, okay, we're creating space, and I think I've said this before, creating an, an opportunity for memories to be made. And that's, I think that's the biggest victory. And that's, that's the definition of success. If we're together enough where things good, bad, and different can happen, that's success. 
Especially for when they get old and. Oh, so all you gotta do to get them to come back when they're old is go somewhere because they won't have any money. Yeah, they, that's right. it, 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 when, when you say, hey, free trip, your meals will be paid for. These kids are gonna come back, man. They'll be coming back for years. Can I bring years. my girlfriend? They'll be coming back for years. Can I bring my boyfriend? Now, if you just say, "Hey, just come back to the house," you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a carrot. That's what that's what I'm building. Um, Indiana Jones Survivor. Well, it, well, before you before you tell your medical story, sure. I, 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 I want I, I want to run something by you that happened to me on the flight back. Okay, you want a cough drop? Uh, nope. And I don't want to touch anything that you've been touching. All right. Um. So, coming back on the flight, you know, it's like a five hour flight, five, six hour flight from Raleigh to LA. And I I got this new neck pillow thing that I'm experimenting with. Because me and Locker are taking a very special trip that I'm not even gonna tell you about until I get back from it because it's gonna, it's a pretty big moment for me. Oh. Uh, but it requires a long flight. And uh, I was like, I want to be able to sleep on the plane. That's I'm, months from now. Yeah, I need to figure out how to sleep on the plane, so I'm going to test some pillows. Mm. I don't like the regular ring, the regular donut pillow. I don't like the fact that there's a pillow behind my neck and I, and I, f- I fall all around. There's this thing I don't even know what it is, um, where you it, it's a brace inside of a blanket and then you wrap it around your neck and then it, sna- it, it, it Velcros back onto itself. And so you're, it's this piece of plastic is basically supporting your head and it got all these reviews on Amazon, like five star reviews on Amazon. You talking about a scarf? It's a scarf with, with a, a built in brace. Okay. And uh, it kinda worked. I still ended up waking up and thinking like, my neck doesn't feel great, but better than if I had one of those traditional pillows. Anyway, so I like slept through the flight attendant coming by and asking, do you want a snack and do you want a drink or whatever? Uh-huh. So I wake up and she's like walking by and I was like, oh, excuse me, um, could I get uh, one of the protein boxes and a water? Like this is like the pay, like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. pay for it, right? She's like, okay. So then another flight attendant comes back and she hands me the protein box. And I was like, thank you. Oh, and can I also get a water? Mm-hmm. And she said, I've only got two hands. Oh, snap. Whoa. I, which, I've only got two hands. What? <laughs> this was not even the same person? It was a different person. And I was like, oh, okay. And before I could be like, I'm not, first of all, there are certain people who, my, like my brother, as an example, yeah, who would immediately clap back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was just like, uh, okay, and then, so then, Jesse, here's this interaction. She's like, "What was that? Why did what, what, you didn't do anything wrong?" Mm. And then, and first of all, you could carry a water in a protein box with two hands. Just FYI, yeah, because one of them's a box <laughs> and one of them's a cup. Well, or a bottle. So, I uh, Jesse then goes gets up to go use the restroom, and then she comes back and she says, "You will not believe what just happened." What happened? She's like that flight attendant was back there telling another flight attendant about the interaction that she just had with you. What? And she was saying, and then he says, "Could I get a water?" And I was like, "I've only got two hands," and I was like, "What is happening?" Like That's weird. And I was, I don't. I, I hope sh- that's not the end of your story. <laughs> it is. Man. Oh no. I don't know what happened. Come on, cause then let me finish your story. So then I got up to quote, use the bathroom. But when I went up there and I saw the woman, I said, excuse me, ma'am. My wife just overheard <laughs> you retelling the story that I was also talking to my wife about. And we can't make sense to the fact that you're so upset that I asked for a water. E- after you deliver me a box. S- d- it seems totally reasonable to then ask for you to go back and get a water. And I'd already asked for a water. Look Even though I'd already another, asked for one. To another flight attendant. So wh- what did I do wrong? What can I do differently next time so that you won't come back and spill the tea to your comrades up here at the front? 
the problem. I'm baffled. The problem with that kind of behavior is that that's the kind of thing that like escalates quickly. The next thing you know, somebody they're turning the like, plane around, like a U.S. marshal, like sticks a syringe in your neck and you fall down. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's like that's the kind of thing that happens when you if anybody, when you rebel on an airplane. If anybody puts you on a like a phone video, they're like that dude is crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Look at his hair. Yeah, and so I was just like, I let it slide. I mean, the other woman did bring me water, and it was great. I, I'm angry. Good. That's, I wanted to. Set, I, I wanted I feel, you to get angry before feel, you told your last story. I feel murderous thoughts. There you go. Now we're talking. I want. I feel like Welcome murdering. Welcome to 2020. This woman who's just gonna. Be, she only wants to be engaged for 90 days so she can. I don't know for some sort of citizenship thing, and that's not even the right show. Pizza rolls. I'm confused. So a few days before um, the holidays really start getting going. I, hold on, no, this was the day after Christmas because th- two days later, we were gonna go to Mammoth. And I wake up, y'all. I think it was before Christmas because I remember talking to you Christmas was it? Eve. Yeah, that's right, it was the Christmas Eve Eve. I, it, I did the thing I rarely do, which is talk to you over break. Because you I heard was, something happen to me. Because I was concerned. And you asked me. I think Jesse asked you, told you to ask me. No, she didn't. To have some sort of empathy. No, your wife texted Jesse yeah. and said something that was strange about your health situation and I called you you know, 90 minutes later. Out of your own <laughs> volition though. You know what, I, I'm glad that you asked me how I was doing and I'm sorry that I assumed that your wife put you up to it. <laughs> Good. Is that really how it happened? It is how okay, it happened. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Tell your story, man. <laughs> so whatever freaking day it was, I'm in a murderous frame of mind now, man. It's your fault if I'm coming down on you. If I'm taking it out on you, it's your fault. Yeah. I woke up because the room was spinning. I didn't wake up and find that the room was spinning. I woke up because with my eyes shut, I was tumbling through some sort of space. <laughs> I opened my eyes and I'm laying on my side, and the room is spinning at this rate. Wow. What miles per hour, if you're on a carousel, it's like if a kid's on one of those merry-go-rounds and an adult is running as hard as they can pushing it around, and you're the kid. That's fast. Fast. But it depends on how big it is. What, the radius of the merry-go-round? Yeah. The centrifugal acceleration is dependent on the radius. Not if you're sitting in the middle of the merry-go-round. You're right about that. All right. So I wake up and it's like, I didn't have anything to drink the night before. I This was no hangover type of a spin. And I sat up and I just sat there and as I was sitting there, I'm slowly falling over on the bed because you know, it's just like if you get real dizzy, you, you, you can't sit up straight. And then finally I got still enough that the room did stop. And I'd slept later than Christy, she wasn't even up there. So I got my phone and I was like, I need you to come up here because I feel weird. But I had to pee really badly. So then I got up and I slowly walked to the toilet and I sat down to pee. Not because I always sit down to pee, which I do, but because I really had to this time. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I I basically fell off the toilet because the room started to spin again. Hmm. And then Christy came up there and uh, I told her, well actually, I made my way downstairs because she never got the text and I'm like explaining to her what happened because um, it would just go into a spin and but it wasn't constant. It was like at certain times. So I got, I made my way down there just fine and I'm like telling her, she's like, well I got up this morning, I was really sick. Do you have a Google Home? Uh, you can broadcast through the whole house. Yeah, I do. So I could like do an intercom thing, when like you, help me, the room is spinning. Yeah, you say, I'm not gonna say the thing. H Google, uh huh. Broadcast, help me, the room is spinning. <laughs> okay. And then it'll do that. I do it all the time. <laughs> I'll do that next time because then hopefully somebody would have come running. And she was like, "Well, I was really sick this morning. Like, it wasn't good." I think I have food poisoning. I'm like, you know what? I guess I we ate the same thing. The kids ate something different. 
Um, well, I, I just we, we thought I had food poisoning somehow. I like Google, like dizziness associated with food poisoning. You can find some link to anything. So like, thought that's what it was. It happened a few that's more some times. Serious food poisoning. <laughs> I know. I just went back and I was like, I'm gonna go back and lay down in bed. And when I laid down, it happened a little bit, but I went to sleep and I woke up with the room spinning. Same thing happening again. Chrissy starts talking to a friend of hers, Katie, who's like, you know, Link's got vertigo. Uh, a lot of my relatives have it. You should try, she mentioned some maneuver, which later it turns out was something called the Epley Maneuver. So we're like Googling this thing. Um, it actually was the next day that we had this conversation with her. We, we didn't uncover this maneuver. You had a day of spinning. I had a day of spinning and a night of it. Gosh. And and I was like looking up, canceling my reservations at Mammoth. Like I was thinking, what, what if I? When do I start getting penalized? If I if I cancel now versus cancel later, how much more is it going to cost me? Because I'm like, there's no signs of this going away. You could have been the guy who just spins down the mountain though. And we were googling a bunch of stuff, but then the next day when we googled this, it was so interesting. It was like, okay, I'll get. This is a maneuver that you can just try on your own. There's like physical therapists who have YouTube videos that tell you how to do it. But the theory behind it is in your inner ear, which of course is a center of equilibrium along with like parts of your brain. You've got these, if you've seen the model of the inner ear, you've got these different loops that come off of it, right? These like different tunnels, which are filled with, I don't know, I'm gonna call it liquid. I believe it is. And it's, and it's these, different tubes that come, that are oriented in different directions that magically in both of yours keep you, it's, it's, it's miraculous when you look at how this, 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 these mechanisms work. Mm. And then the assertion is that if a crystal, which apparently there are crystals in another part of your ear that are supposed to be there, if a crystal. We're not, not, not new age crystals. No, just like a particle. Not like something that Gwyneth Paltrow would insert in her vagina. Like a, not, not a, no, <laughs> not a goop dildo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about what they would call a crystal makes its way into one of these canals where it is not supposed to be. Ooh. Then every time that crystal moves in the canal, you, the room starts spinning. That's and crazy. I, I, I was like, this is wild. Do but you grow these crystals as an adult or like they're there as a baby? I don't understand. I, I don't, they, they seem to imply that it, the crystal got in the wrong place, not that the crystal existed. And these are in the few videos that I watched, okay? I only wanna know how to fix it. I didn't really care about do, reading do the I entire Wikipedia. Crystal, do I have yes. crystals? I just wanna make sure I've got crystals. It This Epley maneuver is wild because it's a series of movements that then manipulate the crystal to go on a nice little trajectory around the loop. Using gravity. Using gravity to then exit that the canal, that, that the tunnel. Now this feels like the kind of thing that. Who do? You, you watch a YouTube video yeah. and you do it. I got really excited and, you know, and I'm like, this ain't going You work. know while it's happening. When you see the thing being performed on someone, you're like, this is not going to work. Especially when it's this simple. Okay, you sit up on your bed and then you lay down such that then your head is tilted back. Like if I'm sitting up here straight, I'm gonna look up, like put my chin in the air so that my, my head is angled back mm -hmm. and then you, you lay back and then you tilt your head to the right or the, depending on which ear it's in, I'll just say, I don't even know which is which, but like you turn to the right 45 degrees and then look back 30 degrees or, or something like that. Did you have a protractor? And then, no, pro, no protractor. <laughs> you have a protractor? Christy was there like holding my head because I showed her the video. Excuse me, I thought I had another scab. Oh gosh. Um, so you lay back, you look in this one direction and the room starts to spin. You hold it until the room stops spinning. What, really? Yes. And, and that did happen. And that happened just a little bit. The room moved just a little. Half spin. And then there's three positions. The second position is, instead of looking to the right 45 degrees, with your head still tilted back, then you, you turn your head to the opposite, looking 45 degrees to the left. Head, head still draped over the end of the bed. I know this may not make sense, but you can watch a YouTube video. Then the room starts to spin again. 
i.e. the crystal has moved and you have to let the room stop spinning so the crystal can settle in this new position. Crystals, man. And then the third one is while you're looking to the left, then you take your whole body and you roll over on your side while keeping that same angle, 45 degree angle of looking to the left. So now you're looking straight down at the floor and laying on your left side. What is your wife doing at this point? She's turning me over and trying to like take the vantage point of like, yes, she's my protractor. Are you both naked? We're both naked, <laughs> yes. We're, we're making love while this is happening. <laughs> I forgot that part. You need to be in a constant state of love right. making. <laughs> right, that's how you get that crystal movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one way. You get lots of crystals moving. Yeah. Uh, when I turned over that to that third position, I every the world unhinged. What it was spinning so aggressively. This is, that I, I, started, I don't want this to happen. I to me. Start, <laughs> it was so scary, dude. Hey, I, I simultaneously felt encouraged because something was happening because it was going according to I was going plan. according to plan, and the room was spinning so aggressively that I started moaning uncontrolled. I was like, Oh wow! Oh, oh. <laughs> That, those are the noises I was actually making. Wow. Oh, and I thought I was going to vomit. Wow. It was so bad, and it took a it took way too long for my taste for the room to stop spinning. But you have to hold. You have it. to wait for the crystal. And then you sit up, and on the edge of the bed, and this one particular YouTube video I saw, which no one else afterward told me that I had to do with this was, but the physical therapist in this video was like, and then at this point, make sure for the next 24 hours that you don't look up. <laughs> and so he recommended that yeah. you put on a neck brace. Yep. And I wanted to follow everything to a T. I didn't have a neck brace, so I mm -hmm. took a towel yeah. and some packaging tape, and I folded a towel up around my neck, yeah, yeah, and then know. I took packaging tape and I taped the, <laughs> I made myself a neck brace. Not looking up. And Christy's like calling the physical therapist who's gonna come into the office and has agreed to see me and make sure that we're doing this right because when it was over, I still didn't feel good. I still felt really discombobulated. But it wasn't spinning. It wasn't spinning and then it, so a few hours later we're supposed to go in to see her but I, did, I thought that she was coming to the house. So I go downstairs, the doorbell rings and it's a, I never met this therapist but it's an, it's an Asian lady. I knew that, Christy told me. So I go to the door with my neck brace on and I open the door and there's an, an Asian lady there. And I say to her, I say, thank you so much for coming, please come on in. <laughs> and she said, oh no, it's fine, I'll stay right here. And I'm thinking, you, can, you can't do the maneuver on me right here. But I didn't say that. And then I saw that she had a name tag. Right, she was, And it said, so and so, Judy so-and-so, Forest Lawn Cemetery. And she was trying to sell boy, me a grave plot. And I'm heard, like, is about, it that bad? She heard about the crystals. <laughs> is it that bad? We, we got a man with crystals. You know what happens. 30% so of the time. My life is falling apart. I opened the door to get treatment and a woman tries to sell me a grave plot. Yeah, and, and she's like, oh, he's got on a towel neck brace. I can barely this is, stand. This is a good start. <laughs> he's close to death. He's definitely at death's door. <laughs> I finally got rid of her and uh, I sat back down and we we went to the Oh, therapist. you didn't buy a plot? I, didn't, I was like, Forest I Forest Lawn is a classy place to go. I'm like, I'm gonna, I wanna be incinerated. Yeah, the you most, can, but you can still have a I headstone. Wanna, I want to find like an environmentally most environmentally friendly way to do it, which may not exist yet. But that's a talk for another time. Okay. I go to the therapist, um, physical therapist. She was kind enough to see me, and um, she did the same maneuver, and it was did it all again. Yeah, but it, nothing was spinning. But okay, yeah, because you had already done it. And you know what? What we did worked. I was just so anxious, and I believe that it wasn't going to work. Do you that know what this reminds me? I of? was just too uptight, and that's what she told me. And then she sold me a special pillow. Oh, she did. Yeah, kind of you, like you, yours, but different. You know what? I'm learning something about. It had like you. husks. In I'm it. learning something about you. Do you remember when you got an Orby stuck in your ear? I got an Orby in my left ear. <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking it out. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't really an Orby stuck in my ear. There was for a moment. I Yeah, there was. And then there was much consternation. Because I, I believed it was still in there, yeah? Yeah, you've got a thing about thinking that things are still in your ear when they're not. Listen, you're the hypochondriac. I am, but 
when, when nothing's wrong with you, you believe that mm-hmm. the world is crumbling. I'm not an acute hypochondriac. But then when something is wrong with me and it gets better, I believe that it hasn't gotten better. Right, it's a different type of hypochondria. Okay, then that's it. it it's that maneuver. A shout out to Mr. or Mrs. Epley who invented that maneuver. It's like magic. Think about all. Think about how they had to like. I waited. I, I suffered a day and a night not knowing about this maneuver. Cadavers? Like, how do they figure it out? Do I, they just look at the ear and think about physics. It yeah, it's awesome. Now I got the wreck this week. It's really geometry. I wreck guess. baby, wreck baby. One two three four. I'll keep it simple. My wreck is. Remember the Epley maneuver when the world starts spinning around you, because it's. Crazy that you remember it or remember that it exists. Just remember that it exists. You don't even have to learn it, just know that it's there. It's a lot more complicated than the Heimlich. The Heimlich, don't watch a YouTube video when that when you need to do that, just do it. Epley, (laughs) Epley, you can take your time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, Also, I I recommend recommend now learning the Heimlich maneuver. Let's all do that today. What does it take to come up with a maneuver? Like what would the McLaughlin maneuver or the Neil maneuver be? Because I feel like well, I have I I, I got oh, you have one. I got a maneuver. But That's again, it's a love making. It, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, well, you have to make a YouTube. That's video. it, man. I mean, it was it's crazy to be that scared and that affected by yeah, something, and you, then just to sit in three different positions and it get better. Here's what I would have done. Okay, when it got better, I would have been so relieved, but when it was happening. I would have thought that it's over. I would have been like, this is it. I got a tumor or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I immediately just jumped to the worst possible conclusion. Right. That's what my hypochondria does. And so, uh, I, I don't think that I would have gone a full day without going and seeing. I, that night, I would have been like, Jesse, we got to go to the emergency room. I was just going to sleep it off. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Couldn't have slept. Hashtag your biscuits. Let us know. Uh, how your year's starting out, or whatever you, however you want to respond to this, and next week. Yeah, we're getting into it next week. Again, it's it's gonna be. We're gonna talk about things we've never talked about before, that may or may not interest you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna talk about them. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.